Hello, it's Cliff here from Down Under. In this video, I'm going to carry on with precision threading. Part one was the external thread. This video is about the internal thread. Cutting a precision internal thread that's going to act as a gauge. And in this video, it won't just be about internal threading. There'll, there'll be a whole lot of tips and tricks that I didn't put in the first video. So please watch it through to the end. Um, I didn't want the first video to be too long, so there'll be quite a few tips and tricks in here for both internal and external threading. So with the internal thread or the nut, obviously bore it out first to the minor diameter. This is the minor diameter here, this flat, in my case it's 28.21 and it's a little bit bigger, it's clearance, than the actual core diameter of the external thread which is down there in the radius. But if you're not cutting a super high class thread, it's probably a good idea to bore that out slightly bigger, a little bit more clearance there, so that when you're fitting the thread you're not getting confused because it's binding up on the edges of that radius. So I might bore this out slightly bigger because I don't want to get any interference at that point. So again, I've put some ink on the bore. I've got my thread gauge and I've checked that the pitch is correct. And now I'm all ready to start cutting thread. I'm going to cut the thread to fit the external thread gauge that I've already made. And that's an easy way to cut an internal thread is to first source an external thread and fit it. It's much easier to measure an external thread, for example with the three wire method, than it is to try and measure an internal thread. So here I'm using a different method for threading. I'm just going to turn it off, put the brake on, back out, reverse, so I'm remembering the digital readout number 28.6, I'm going to go to 28.8, I'm going to put a little bit of feed on the top slide and away I go again. back away, reverse out. You can put the feed on while it's reversing on the top slide. That's ensuring it only cuts on one flank. 20. That was 30. Brake, back out, reverse. Put the offset on the top slide. I'll explain that in a minute. Come back out. We were on 30. We're going to come out to 30.2. Bit of cutting oil in there. Back out. You can do things while it's backing out. Bit of offset on the top slide. 30.2. 30 point, that was quite a big cut, so I'll go 30.3 now. That seems a bit better, 30.3. I'm going to put the speed up now on the motor. 30.3. Point four and a little bit of offset on the top side. Break back out. You only need to remember one number. So we're currently on 30.4, we're coming to 30.5. A little bit of offset on the top slide, so we only cut on one flank, but a cutting oil.
So you get the idea. So let me take the camera off. Tripod. So when I say a little bit of offset here, I'm offsetting this each time about half of the cut that I'm putting on the radius or a quarter of the cut I'm putting if I'm using diameter mode and that is ensuring that the cutter doesn't cut on both flanks of the thread until I get almost to size and then I'll be taking shave cuts without offsetting. So when I say full form insert like this 3.5 millimeter pitch discar whether it's in metric pitch or threads per inch it is a full form for only that pitch or those threads per inch it has the theoretically the exactly correct profile just for that thread so that when you cut the thread you cut the core of the thread and you scrape on the top of the thread for example on a male external thread and you can't use those inserts to cut a multi multiple of forms you can only cut that pitch and then there's another type of insert called a multi form insert you could call it a multi form insert that is generally quite a big shape thread cutter but it has a sharp point and it will cut tiny threads medium threads and fairly big threads all with the one insert now that sounds like the way to go you're thinking I only have to have one packet of inserts and I can cut all my threads but just remember it doesn't allow you to cut exactly the correct depth so you don't know the depth by the shaving of the crest point and also it doesn't have the tip radius and the uh, core the core radius and the crest radius built into the cutter so you either have to omit those or stone those diamond lap those on yourself or cut them on the actual part that you're threading so a multi-form is a sort of an approximation of the profile you want but not an exact pro profile a specific form is just for the one pitch or threads per inch and gives you the exact profile in theory and of course the external threading inserts for the male threads are different from the internal threading inserts that have more clearance on them and fit into a type of boring bar type of holder so you know to be fully equipped with all of the specific threads you'd have to have a range of holders and quite a big range of inserts I tend to have um, a range of specific inserts for external threading and then I just make do with a, a multi-pitch or a high-speed steel ground up and stoned insert for internal threading. Um, you have to look at your own um, situation as to what sort of range of inserts you're going to carry in stock. The absolute minimum um, if you're going to use inserts would be to have a multi-form and uh, just find different ways of uh, correctly machining the profile that you want by modifying the insert or the actual part you're machining um, and use say high speed steel for the internals and just grind those up you can grind those up with a thread grinding gauge like that and look up the specifications and uh, diamond lap little radiuses and flats on them and get pretty close um, with a limited amount of tooling the subject of threading tooling is too big to cover in this video. This is just a basic introduction. Um, here I'm going to diamond lap this uh, multi-form internal insert, which is sort of like on a boring bar, and I'm just going to lap a tiny little flat there on the tip to approximately correspond to the specifications when you start getting near to size you can begin to try your external thread in it's just a little bit tight so I'm going to need to take a slight shaving I'm writing down here the number each time I take a pass and you can back off with your cross slide and that way you don't have to in disengage 
your half nuts. So I'm doing all of this th internal threading with the half nuts engaged and I'm just reversing out each time. And that's often quicker for a short thread like a nut or a internal thread, um, but you may want to disengage your half nuts for long threads, long uh, screws, lead screws and so on. So I'm almost out to finish size now. Now because I didn't lap as big a flat on this multi-form insert, I have to come out deeper. But that's only clearance, and clearance in a nut doesn't generally weaken a nut, so that's not a bad thing. The theoretical diameter would be 32.2, but because I haven't lapped as big a flat on the insert, I'll be coming out to something like 32.7. 7.5 or 8. Okay, a full form shaving pass at 32.8. Okay. And now we can blow that out with compressed air and try our thread gauge, our external thread for fit. Let's put a little bit of oil on there and give it a try. So we're going for a close fit because we want a effectively a ring gauge that will fit on the thread gauge that we've already made so that we can use this ring gauge when we're cutting multiple spindles. Yeah, it's fairly tight, but it's gone the whole way through, so that's pretty good. That's that's about what I want. I can now use that as a useful gauge. Now while I've got it set up, I'll machine a lap, a bit like Presso has, so that I can then close the lap up with abrasive compound and lap the production threads. Now I need to machine a chamfer on the leading and trailing edges. So you can see there, let's see if we can have a look down in there. There's a thread form. Well, this is just aluminium, so it's pretty easy to machine. Usually you'll be using, you know, high tensile steel or stainless steel, and so it becomes quite a bit more difficult. You need a really rigid tool and everything set exactly right. Um, but, you know, for a gauge that's only used occasionally, aluminium is fine in this situation. I know some of you are thinking, I've been bad, I didn't keep the lead screw clean and the half nuts have probably got dirt and chips embedded in them. It doesn't feel like I can properly close the half nuts anymore onto the lead screw because there's dirt and chips embedded in it. Well one way you can get at it is to get a little bit of wire bent on the end and get in there and try and scrape it out and then you can get uh, some CRC or WD-40, you know how you have the straw on the end, um, and put that down in there um, to really inject solvent down inside the thread. I had this crazy idea during the night, I think it's going to work quite well, where I've got little cross holes drilled, not drilled, I melted the end of the straw, can you see it there, with a little uh, cigarette lighter, fused over the end of the straw, and then just ground with a, a corner of a grinding wheel, a little nick through the end. So now that compressed air and the CRC or WD-40 is coming out sideways, and that's what you need to really blow the chips and dirt out of your half nut. I mean, ideally, you should pull it all apart and clean it properly, but that's probably pretty difficult to get at on some lathes. I've been hesitating doing that, so I've just made up this little hack using um, the CRC or WD-40 straw. And then you can connect it to your airline and put it down inside the half nuts. and blow out in various positions above and below the lead screw to blow out any little bits of chips or dirt that may have become embedded in there. Alright, so let's have a look at these threads up close now as best as we can.
Now although I'm calling these gauges, be aware they're only made in a non-temperature controlled workshop on a rather cheap Chinese lathe. They're not thread ground in a laboratory style workshop and so they're not going to be accurate to microns but they're good enough for the type of application that I want them for. When you're cutting threads to specifications, especially if you're only making the external or the internal thread to fit somebody else's or existing part in a different area, be careful that you're using the same specifications. I've come unstuck in the past using an old machinery handbook to get metric threading specs which are different from the current ISO metric threading specs and there may be other discrepancies within specifications so just be aware of that potential for a disaster. Well thanks for watching that second video if you found something useful there please like if you're not already subscribed please consider subscribing and I'd like to hear your thoughts in the comments about what I'm doing here with this channel. Cheers!